This film is a summary of Power the Fight's Therapeutic Intervention for Peace pilot, delivered in three schools in South London in spring 2021. Based on the recommendations of Power the Fight's 2020 report, the pilot aimed to provide culturally competent services to improve young people's mental health and reduce their vulnerability to involvement in violence. 26 young people took part in the pilot. Some were learning at home because of lockdown, while others had places in school. At one school, Power the Fight's team were able to go in person. At the other two, we worked online. In baseline assessments for the young people, 42% felt worried or anxious about being at school. 47% were worried or anxious about something outside the school. 32% said they did not have someone to help them if they felt distressed or were not sure they did. With a focus on co-production and co-design, the young people were asked to identify issues they would like to discuss. Those frequently identified were youth violence, friendships, social media, plans for leaving school, drugs and alcohol, intimate relationships and violence at home. The young people then took part in weekly workshops on these topics. Empathy and connection were built through meaningful discussions on topics the young people did not usually have a safe space to explore. When asked what they enjoyed most about the project, young people answered, talking about our thoughts and feelings, and how I can speak about what I wouldn't normally talk about. Our team demonstrated cultural competency through diverse representation and experience. All staff were provided with clinical supervision to reflect on their cultural competency throughout. This resulted in the young people building trusting relationships with our team very quickly. Schools commented on how comfortable and happy young people were around our staff. And one young person commented, it felt like a safe space. In two of the schools, we also held workshops using art therapy. 100% of young people said they enjoyed these sessions and 90% said they would like to continue this type of workshop in the future. They described feeling calm, creative and relaxed during the sessions. One young person said they liked how we got to use art to express as well as calm our emotions. At the end of the workshops, young people shared their learning with other students in their year group through creating a website, presenting artwork or a rap or making a film. Power the Fight also delivered training for 214 school staff on youth violence and on race, diversity and inclusion. School staff described it as the most important training that we have had. As a result of the training, schools said they would do more to recognise structural bias and inequalities, as well as increasing understanding of the cultures represented in their specific localities. We also provided one-to-one -one therapeutic support to nine staff members. It was clear that school staff have few opportunities for honest and constructive reflection. Power for Fight also held forum events for 10 parents and carers at one school. The main issues discussed were the impact of COVID lockdowns and school closures and young people's loneliness and anxiety. The pilot faced challenges with having to deliver most aspects of the project online which impacted on its potential outcomes. However, there are still key lessons and recommendations that can be taken to improve young people's mental health and reduce vulnerability to involvement in violence. Young people have a broad variety of serious concerns around relationships, safety and well-being. However, they have little co-production in their education, so spaces for openly discussing their concerns are often non-existent. The project found young people benefit greatly from therapeutic group work that allows personal and interpersonal reflection. Innovative therapeutic approaches delivered by culturally competent practitioners can produce safe, calm and transformative spaces where young people feel heard and understood. Teachers currently do not have sufficient time or safe spaces to reflect openly on culturally competent practice and institutional inequalities. Training sessions alone will not lead to long-term structural changes, so it is vital to establish regular opportunities for reflective supervision for staff as part of creating a culture of openness to change. Finally, culturally competent education requires awareness of the specific communities and cultures that are represented in each context. 
There is a clear need for staff to connect with parents and carers beyond academic issues to embed the school within its wider community.